Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I am back with my Spring Reading Wrap Up Part 1. I don't actually know how many parts there's going to be to my Spring Reading Wrap Up but I think they're going to be until sort of beginning to mid-May, we'll see, they might go on a little bit after that. But the reason for that is, one, um, I haven't done any wrap up since January and weirdly I've had a bit of a wobble with wrap ups over the last few months. It happened between August and December last year, I didn't do them, I normally do two a month and I did one big bump one and I thought I got back in the swing hadn't and um also the second reason is that i'm not going to be talking in these videos about the women's prize long list um which ones i've read etc because me and my mum will be uh doing our own sort of like what we'd like to see on the shortlist video and she watches this channel so i don't want to spoil that because we we're being really secretive about what we think about the long list basically and all the titles um and also i'm judging the desmond elliott prize so i can't talk about those books um so yeah there we go that's me setting out my stall of what the reasons are behind these spring wrap-ups they are going to be a bit of a hodgepodge and from all over the place because my goodreads uh, has gone too far um, and i'm not sure if i'm going to keep goodreads or not i'm thinking about at the moment anyway let's get cracking and talk about 15 books that i read in the spring um well these are kind of a mixture of February and some of March, actually. Um, but I wanted to start off with a book that I absolutely loved and is one of my absolute favourite books of the year. Um, and I haven't thought about doing a whole video on this book, but I might wait until I've read the author's next book, which is out now. Um, this is, in the end, it was all about love by Musa Okwonga. And I just loved this. It's a relatively short book, but it's certainly a short, sharp pocketbook of power. Um, it's stunningly done with um, poetry inside uh, in different um, colour pages. And this is sort of a book that um, is on the verges of fiction and non-fiction. Um, in the fact that it, it tells of Musa, well, no, it tells of a man who has moved to Berlin in the lead up to his 40th birthday. His father died when he was 40, so he's got quite a lot of um, superstitions and nostalgia and worries around his 40th year. But also what it's like to start a life in a new um, city, um, just as a newcomer, but also as a bisexual black man. Um, and so what we have, as well as some poetry around all of this, is the story of how this man settles, the, the highs and the lows of moving there, the relationship with his father, um, and, and looking at age. And yeah, it's a beautifully, beautifully, beautifully written book. It has moments of heartbreak in it, it has moments of hope, but it's so real and raw, I just can't recommend it enough. And I'm so excited, although I think it's going to be a really hard read, for um, Musa's um, memoir, which has come out about his time at Eton, which I'll be reading very, very soon. But yeah, this is incredible. If you go on to Rough Trade Books website, that's where you should be able to get a copy. Um, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. I found a new favourite author. So yes, very much recommended. Um, then three books that I reread for um, a good read on BBC Radio 4, which is a show that like I've always had delusions of grandeur or sort of dreams that I could end up on that show, never thinking it would really, really happen. And it did. Um, I will link the episode down below. Um, so my choice and reread uh, was An American Marriage by Tara Jones. And I loved this as much the second time. This won the Women's Prize a couple of years ago when me and mum read The Longest Together for the first time. And this was I predicted this as my winner. I think Mum chose um, My Sister the Serial Killer, which was a great book as well. Anyway, um, this is about Celestial and Roy, who are newlyweds, um, and we follow them as they go away one weekend to see um, his parents. I think it's, yeah, it is his parents. And at the hotel they're staying at, um, he helps a woman with a faulty door, and then the police arrive and arrest him of rape. Now, we know that um, he has not raped this woman. Um, Celestial knows that he has not raped this woman. But as a black man, there's not much investigation around whether he has or hasn't, and so he ends up in prison um, as a huge um, misjustice. And that's one of the things that makes this book so powerful, apart from the fact that Tara Jones's writing is just wonderful um but it's the fact that we know the truth and so does Lestia and yet we watch what happens to their marriage from this point and some of the letters that Roy writes to Celestial 
I just, every time I read them, I just cry because he's trying to, like, he's saying that he can't put into words how much he loves her, but in these letters, he totally does. But also, we know what's going on with Celestial in the real world outside of prison, um, as it were. So, yeah, just, I love this. Um, it didn't necessarily get a unanimous review, but I'll let you listen in for thoughts on that one. Um, then uh, Citizen was one of the other choices by Claudia Rankine. I've talked about this. It's one of my favourite non-fiction books of last year. This is um, a poetry collection, but also it's multimedia. So you have um, pictures in here. You have, um, well, pictures of part of the multimedia, but also it's Vignetti, which I absolutely love. And this looks at both big moments of horrific racism um also times where people haven't realized how racist they're being again on a big platform um but also about the little insidious sort of flipping off the cuff racist comments uh, that happen every day uh, in conversations that are overheard or uh, you are part of and I thought what was really clever about this was that um a lot of the time it's you and you are and so you're put into the uh, headspace of somebody who is enduring um, racism on small uh, moments and big moments um, and how yeah just how insidious it all is um, but also there's moments that you're left to create some of the imagery in your head which is very very difficult um, to read but it's so powerful and so brilliant and I read um, Don't Let Me Be Lonely, um, Claudia's follow-up and I have, I think it's just us um, to read as well which I will do in due course but I love this, the second read, I think this is just such a powerful book and so many of you recommended it to me um, over a year ago now and uh, yeah I thought it was great and then another reread but actually I say that I DNF'd it the first time um, because I wasn't enjoying it but I did finish it this time and I got much more out of it while was Anne Enright's actress, um, which is the story of a mother and daughter. The mother is has been a famous actress across Broadway. Uh, didn't quite make it into cinema for long, but um, it's how now she is older and how her and her daughter's relationship has changed. And it was a book that I... I mean, you'll hear me talk about this if you go and listen to a good read. Like, I thought the writing on a sentence level, sentence by sentence, was incredible. But I felt like this book wanted to do lots of things and therefore was sort of not able to do them all. There was Anne and Wright I've read before, and um, it was The Green Road. And the section that's told by the son of the family in America in the 1980s is some of the most incredible writing. But the rest of the book felt in parts over melodramatic didn't quite make sense and I found that with this a bit because there was a, a scene around a bomb that happens in Dublin that was so powerful that whole segment of the book was so powerful and actually Dublin I guess is a character in this book um but I felt like the rest of it just didn't have that energy and actually sometimes I wanted to learn more about things that were shied away from a little bit like and um, there's a, a marriage of convenience in this book and I thought that was brilliant but we didn't get very much about it so yeah it just let, it left me wanting really I think is how I put it and that's happened twice now with Anne and Wright so uh, maybe that's just me and her relationship. On to another Irish writer and the first of two of um the books that Melanie and I have read for our book club. I'll link both of the videos so that you can watch them if you would like below to see more. Um, and we read Marianne Key's Grown Ups as our first book of uh, 2021. And this is a chunkster. I have not read Marianne Key's before, but I will definitely be reading her again and possibly trying to match my uh, jumpers with her books forevermore. Um, I don't think I even did that in the video with Melanie. Anyway, um, this is all about um, one family. Well, actually, no, it's about the brothers in the family. So, you, but, well, no, it's not even really about the brothers in the family. It's more about the uh, brothers in a family. And no, start again, Simon. This book is about the Casey family. And within that family are three brothers. But we really follow those three men's partners. So we have Jesse, we have uh, Cara, and we have Nell. Um, and Jesse is very kind of business minded and business orientated. Um, Cara works in hospitality and that actually is very much her personality. She really wants to care for people, like for people. And Nell is very artistic. And I did wonder if actually Marion Keys was trying to, in hindsight, sort of write about business, um, nurture, uh, hospitality. And those are sort of themes throughout the book because they do come up. And what you do, 
there's lots more on this book in the video that I'll link down below. But what you do is you, um, the book starts after Kara has hit her head and she starts to just tell the truth at a dinner and lots of secrets that have been brewing under come to the fore. But very cleverly, which I thought was going to irritate me and it didn't um, because it's so brilliantly done, Marianne then takes us back, I think about nine or ten months and we start to see how these secrets come to be and and the sort of I guess germination of all these different things that are going on secretly within this family and she does it at different family gatherings and I just loved it I got kept getting so excited for what the next gathering might be and although there are quite a lot of characters in it and like I said I, well like you saw I got a bit tripped over my words at the beginning when I was trying to explain it once you're in it it's so readable and I got through this so quickly um yeah I would definitely like to read more Maranke so if you've got any recommendations for which ones I should head to let me know in the comments down below but do go and watch the video that me and Melanie have done on that as you can go and watch the video that me and Melanie have done on My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell, which funnily enough has a quote on it from Marianne Keys. She said it was brilliant and it is indeed brilliant. It's a really hard book to read though. This is about um, a young woman called Vanessa who we meet her at two different time periods. The first is when she's 15 and she starts what she at the time believes is a consensual relationship with her teacher. And we, obviously, uh, reading it, know that this is not the case. And the way, though, that Kate Elizabeth Russell writes about how she's groomed, it's both uh, deeply unsettling, but also horrifically plausible. Um, but then we head uh, into the future when um, Vanessa is older and it's come to light that there have been more complaints and allegations made against um, her teacher. And it's how she then is dealing with that, especially when people want her to come forward and say that she um, was assaulted by him, but she doesn't feel that way. I mean, it's just... It's a really, really hard topic to read about, but I think Kay Elizabeth Russell does such an amazing job. And the way she depicts the relationship with um, Vanessa and Strain, um, her teacher, as, as it goes on, both back in the past and in the present day, up to a certain point, no spoilers, um, is really, really, yeah, it, it's so hard to read and so bleh, but you kind of can't start it does read like a thriller i found it very difficult to put it down even though sometimes i really really needed to so um yeah uh, uh, i don't want to say it's an incredible read but it is an incredible read it's a hard and difficult read but i'm really glad i've read it and i think if you are able to um i would highly recommend that you read it um, and also actually i went to the lovely candid book club and got to be part of a book club with the author uh, the candid book club with the first book club on sky arts book club live last autumn um and uh, yeah that was incredible to hear the author talking about it and i mean there's some books in there's some books there's some moments in this book that again a bit like what i was saying about um claudia rankine's book it's sometimes those small moments um, that can be the most affecting, like the, the big moments are horrific, but actually those smaller moments all, also can be as difficult to read. Anyway, yeah, I thought it was great. As I did, The Cost of Living by Deborah Levy, which is the second in her Living Biography trilogy. The third has arrived. I'm very upset that it is the third because I don't want it to be over. It's a chunkster, it's called Real Estate. Um, and I wanted to read it by now. I haven't, shame on me, but I'm going to read it soon. Um, this is, I just love Deborah Levy's writing full stop. It doesn't matter whether she's writing fiction or non-fiction. It's just so good. And um, this follows on from, what was the first one called? The, I was just going to say The Cost of Living and that isn't right. I should know this. Um, it follows on from Things I Don't Want to Know. Um, but this looks at her when she when her marriage ended and how she had to cope when she had to move out with her daughters and how that was for their relationship but also how she was dealing with um the marriage breakup but also about some of her writing which i really really loved and i think that's something that i have enjoyed particularly with these 
two in the, the first trilogy is I've read the books that she talks about writing, if that makes sense. But it's also about um, her mother becoming very, very ill. Um, and so there's actually quite a lot about mothers and daughters. There's some brilliant pieces about one wonderful neighbour and one absolutely awful neighbour. And she celebrates the extraordinary sorry she ex she celebrates when the ordinary is extraordinary and I don't know there's just something so wonderful about her writing I just yeah I, I think once I've read real estate I'll want to go through and read them all almost like binging them in in a trio um as it is a trilogy I feel like I said trio and trilogy too many times now but suffice to say I thought this was amazing can't recommend it enough um now I enjoyed this book very very much but I, I've got a few issues around it, if I'm being 100% honest. And that is Sally Rooney's Conversations with Friends. Now, I absolutely loved Normal People. I was very lucky to get a proof of it. I read it before it came out. Um, I loved it so much. I ended up on the train station posters because I'd wanged on about how great I thought it was. That isn't the quote they chose to use. Um, I just thought it was incredible. I loved the way um, Sally Rooney looks at the unsaid and what isn't communicated and, yeah, miscommunication, all those things. So picking up this, I was very, very excited. Now, I'd heard that you apparently love one or don't like the other. That seems to be the general consensus. But I did really, really enjoy this. I think this, the sadness for me is that I felt like it was the same story, just slightly tweaked. And I wonder if I'd read this first and then normal people, I might have felt that way too. But here we have, I'm forgetting the character's names, which is awful, Francis and Bobby, who are friends who kind of have this relationship, sexual relationship um, on occasion. But they meet a couple called Nick and Melissa. And um, Bobby becomes very interested in Melissa and Francis becomes very interested in Nick. And it's how these sort of, it's all about trysts. Um, which I, which isn't isn't what normal people's about, but I don't know what it is. I just felt like it ran through the same course. We had a relationship that was sort of friendship, but then sexual, but yet at the same time kind of distanced. Then that spread out a little bit further, and then we ended up on a lovely trip to Europe, and that actually did make me laugh because that happened in Marianne Key's book as well. And there is something about when suddenly characters living in the UK suddenly just pop off for a very middle class holiday in um, Europe, and be like, oh, even though. I myself pop off for very middle class holidays in Europe. I don't know. Maybe I feel seen. Um, but um, I just and and there's you know one of the characters is a writer and it just felt a bit samey. And I have to say, I did a reveal for um, Beautiful World, Where Are You, which I'm excited about. But having read the blurb, I feel like it might be the same thing again. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that because I think Sally Rooney is exploring different things with each book in many ways. But I also think, you know, variety is the spice of life. Um, so we'll see. But I'm, I'm really intrigued to read Beautiful World, Where Are You? And I will be reading it. But um, I just, yeah, this this didn't satisfy me as much as I wanted it to because I kind of felt it was, I don't know, a, a diluted normal people. But then I wonder if, like I said, if I'd read them the other way around, I would have feel the other way. I would feel vice versa, if that makes sense. So yeah, there we go. Um, then, as I um, am judging the Desmond Elliott Prize, I thought it'd be quite nice to read some books that have previously won the Desmond Elliott Prize. And one such book is Saraswati Park by Anjali Joseph. Now, I have wanted to read more Indian fiction for ages. And um, this is set in Saraswati Park in India. And it's about a couple whose uh, nephew moves in with them. And it's how he is dealing with his sexuality. It's how his uncle and aunt are dealing with their relationship and what's going on, but also what's going on politically within India at that time. Now, I enjoyed this, but I have to say, for me, a lot of this was a lot of sh sort of showing, showing, showing. Um, and I felt like the place was done really vividly. But the story wasn't, I couldn't quite work out what the story was because also some of it became quite repetitive and I didn't see what the, I couldn't quite work out what Anjali Joseph was trying to say once I'd read it. Um, so, yeah, I I think as well I was a little bit disappointed that Ashish, who is the, the gay nephew, 
gets into some very negative situations with other gay men and I just feel like that's been done so much and I'm a bit bored of queer characters ending up in miserable cycles or miserable storylines um especially when not especially when yes I think if it had been around how although it would have been difficult to read if it had been around cultural um well, the negative bias on queer people within that culture. But this was just some horrible people not being particularly nice. Um, and I couldn't see the cultural issues being a reason for it. It just was horrible people being horrible. So, yeah, tricky, um, my thoughts on that one. But, um, yeah, I, but that said, I would like to read more of her books. But I do feel like it was definitely like endless paragraphs of beautiful prose about the place, which the title is kind of the place that the book is set and so maybe therefore that is why the book is so much about it um but yeah anyway there we go um a beautiful cover uh here with uh, black narcissus by Rima godden which is a book that one of the books that chris picked off my shelves for me when i did a vlog of um him doing that where i let him choose my uh, reading habits i'll link where i let him choose my reading habits where i let him choose my reading i'll link it down below um and um, and actually some of those books are from uh a I can't speak. Some of these some of these videos, some of these books are also from a video that I did where I only read yellow covers. I'll link that down below. And the reason I've not included all the books from all those videos because I just wanted to mix it up a bit, basically. Anyway, um, Black Mouse is this. Chris picked it off my shelves because it looked beautiful. He'd also seen there was an adaptation on the telly. This is about a monastery which has gone to... No, it's not a monastery. That's not true. It's actually about a nunnery, but it's about this sort of huge palace that has gone to rack and ruin that was kind of this salacious um, build for this grandiose man. Um, and now it's been left to some nuns. And once they're in there, it's how it's how their relationships twist and spiral, but also how things change both for them and the people around this place, some of the history of that place. <sighs> I didn't love it. Um, I wanted the book to be as beautiful as that cover or just as brilliant as that cover and I just felt a bit disappointed by it. I have to say the ending is brilliantly dramatic but and I've said this on my channel a lot of times or on here a lot of times a book's got to be more than its ending. I don't it, it, I, I just don't think you can say oh I read 250 pages for the final 50 pages and I think I don't know. I mean, there was obviously enough to draw me through because I found the relationships between the nuns interesting and I just find that whole religious life fascinating. We have retired nuns living opposite us um, and I've never kind of asked them about their career as nuns. Anyway, who knew that nuns are retired, but they do. Um, so yeah, I, it just was a bit of a disappointment, but it was one of my um, 40 classics before 40. I am glad I've read it. I can't say I would read anything else, but I will say it's dated some of the language I didn't really like um, in terms of it being slightly problematic in today's uh, world. Um, but yeah, it was it was fine. That's an awful thing to say, isn't it? It's fine. Um, then on the other end of the spectrum, a book that I absolutely love, but I don't blink in know why, because I didn't think I really understood it. Um, and that's Pond by Claire Louise Bennett, but I just love the writing. So this is, a, is kind of several short stories which could read as a novel because it's the same protagonist who is just thinking about random moments so the title alludes to um her thinking about why a pond has to have a sign on it at a party because it's not deep enough for anyone to fall in and drown in so just what's the point and yet that works there's a whole bit where she's thinking about different potatoes that works and um, there's also an incredibly sinister um, story in here where she is walking on her own and she's thinking about how likely or not it is that she might get raped. Um, that was very difficult to read but but brilliantly written. Um, and yeah, there's, there's just some... It's a really odd, quirky collection that I still don't quite understand what went on throughout it um, other than these all these different sort of random thoughts as they came about. But I really, really like the writing. I laughed a lot, um, even when I didn't quite know what the heck was going on or where we were going to go next. It was a ride. So yeah, I'm looking forward. She's got a novel coming out. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. And also, I should say, this is the American edition, which I really, really, really love. Um, then we have, um, and Chris chose that actually off my shelves um, because he liked the cover. Um, I don't have the finished copy of this. Um, it is Boy Queen by George Lester. I did have it, but I... Um, 
gave it to my mum's school. I'm donating any YA uh, queer books that I love to my mum's school. So I've kept, um, I've kept this. Um, I've kept the proofs, sorry. And also sometimes it's really nice to have the proofs. So I really, really enjoyed this. I've just realised that I've completely forgotten the name of the title. Okay, Robin, Robin. Um, this is all about a young man called Robin who is basically coming to terms with his both his sexuality and what he wants to do in life and he's got this kind of really rubbish relationship with a boy who's closeted at school. Um, it's about him wanting to get into theatre school and that not quite going the way he hoped and so he ends up going to a um, drag show uh, and wanting to do drag and I won't say any more because I don't want to spoil it because it's just such a treat. I read this in a single day. I just literally devoured it. I thought it was brilliant. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, it's really lovely because I know George um, and just his personality and his joy is totally in this book, along with his real passion for um, drag and pop um, and theatre. But also he write some beautifully heartbreaking scenes if that can be such a thing um so yeah it's the kind of book that i wish that i'd had in my school library when i was a kid hence why i donated it to my mum's sorry someone was at the door right so four more books to go one hit and then three absolute misses i should have said at the beginning i'm gonna be slating a few books coming up because that would have kept people watching i'm sure probably anyway this is a treat for those of you who are dedicated to the cause and watch every single minute i'm joking it does bother me if people need to go and trail off and do anything anyway blah blah next book chris um chose me the red house mystery by a.a a. milne and he chose this because a. a milne of course is known for writing winnie the pooh um not particularly for writing a um crime well mystery i was gonna say thriller and it has got thrills and skills but it's very wild ho and uh, it's very much kind of Agatha Christie golden era crime. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's about a murder that happens in a big old house, lots of people are suspects and amateur, amateur detective-ness shenanigans, whatever, begins. Um, there's a few very wry uh, sort of, well, nods uh, a bit of shade towards Sherlock Holmes throughout this, which I kind of enjoyed, even though Sherlock is like, you, you can't beat Sherlock in my mind uh, for a, a detective. But I did I did enjoy those nods. And also I like the fact that I didn't guess what direction it was going to go. I had an inkling actually at one point and then I thought, no, it can't do that. Um, but I never felt like I was being wrong footed. Uh, there are a few red herrings, but enjoyable ones, because sometimes I think with crime, especially modern crime, actually, is I can sometimes feel like the author is really, really trying to mislead you so that you have that <gasps> big twist. This isn't like that. This is just as joyful twist as you go and secret passages and ponds that have mystery at the bottom of them. And yeah, it's just it's really, really, really good fun. So I'd recommend it very, very much indeed. Now on to the duds. Sexuality, a graphic novel by Meg John Barker and Jules Scheel. I was really excited for this one. I think the cover is absolutely stunning. It's a shame that therefore it's black and white throughout and reads like a flipping children's textbook that you would have got at school in the, uh, well, when was I at school? The 90s. Um, so yeah, I found this quite dry. Um, I found it quite patronising. I also found some of it quite I don't want to use the word problematic often because I think it's overused a bit like counselling people, but I just found some of it uh, not inappropriate. What's the term that I want to use? Just, it just, 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 <laughs> what to say? I just, yeah, some of it I just didn't agree with. There we go. I very much disagreed with. I didn't quite like how it looked at certain things within the queer community. Um, I was just, yeah, really, really disappointed by it. And it was supposed to, but it just, it did feel like I was being really taught something rather than enjoyably learning something. And for me, that's an absolute killer. But also it felt very much like this was two people's version of what sexuality should be, even though they were quoting lots of people with lots of different thoughts. So yeah, just not for me, didn't like it. Um, I didn't really, and this is gutting because, in fact, no, I'm going to go the other way around. Um, so I was sent by Vintage um, two of the um, uh, Fairy Tale Revolution books, Cinderella Liberator by Rebecca Solnit was one, and Mallory Blackman's Blue Blood was the other. There is one by Jeanette Winston, there's one by Camilla Shamsey. I was going to buy them to have the whole set, but I 
really didn't like them. I particularly didn't like this one. Um, so I have meant to read Rebecca Sonnet for ages. Everyone's raved about her writing. I can't see why from this book. Um, she retold Cinderella as, sorry, slight spoiler, but Cinderella being liberated by ending up running a cake shop. I mean, what's that all about? Um, and I just, I, if I was reading it to a kid, it was dry. Also, I know that they were like trying to modernise it, but why are they using the sort of illustrations from years ago? Like these are sort of illustrations that I had when I was a kid and I felt like it should have just been a bit more funky full stop. Um, and it wasn't. And I was really gutted as well because Blue Blood was better, but it's still for me, I don't know. I, I've not read Manu Blackman before and I've always wanted to. This probably wasn't the best in because I was in a grump because I'd just read that one because I decided to read them both together because... I think it was when I was having a Durkin I was just feeling a bit rough and I thought, well, these will be the... So it could be that as well. But, uh, you know, it just, again, I just found whilst, you know, the imagery just wasn't good enough as far as I was concerned with either of these. And I didn't really like the stories that they were telling. I mean, to be fair to Blue Blood, I like the real twist on the uh, fairy tale of Bluebeard. I did really like how it was twisted. But I just left feeling like, mm, OK, that was all right. Um, so, yeah. I, I'm not going to get the other two and I won't have these for long and now that I've done this video actually I can pass them on um, and maybe some children in the library will enjoy them but like I said I found them dry so I'm not quite sure how. I also couldn't work out what age range these were aimed at because that one was really dry and this one felt a little bit grown up for picture book age but I don't have children so I don't know. So there we are those are some of the books that I read in February and March. I'll be back probably next week with more books that I read in February and March and I'll be back on Sunday with a book haul and Monday with the next of mine and Melanie's book club where and I haven't got it to oh no I have got it to hand I'm fibbing. Uh, we'll be discussing uh, Exciting Times by Noise Dolan. Now just to make this clear this has recently been put onto the Desmond Prize long list the three judges myself uh, Chitra and um, Lisa don't choose the long list that's done by a group of readers who read the whole long list and they're from all around the country and they choose the 10 books for us to then whittle down to a shortlist and a winner and um, so I didn't know this was going to be on the long list when me and Melanie chose to read it so the prize know that I know that, you know that. There we are. Anyway, I will speak to you all very, very soon. Let me know in the comments down below any of your thoughts on any of these books that I've talked about. And uh, yeah, I hope you're doing as well as can be. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.